So my name is uh, Svante Nogan. I'm head of the Children's Hospital here at Karolinska. And it was my great pleasure to welcome the First Lady here. It's a great honor and pleasure to discuss areas of mutual interest where we might be able to find some collaborations. So uh, we have visited our outpatient services and, and a ward looking at the play therapy, school and library and all the facilities that is specific to a pediatric hospital like ours. So I understand that the Rwanda population is quite young and uh, we are looking at ways to uh, improve the highly specialized care and our hospital is specialized in the highly specialized care in Sweden. We have uh, members of our staff who has uh, uh, visited and, and uh, wor worked in Rwanda with Operation SMILE, uh, Little Hills and Pediatric Health Initiative. Esteemed guests, the story of Rwanda, our home that we affectionately call uh, the lands of uh, Thousand Hills, well, uh, I wonder what to begin. What an odyssey. The dawning words, let there be light, feel rather applic applicable here. Rwanda has emerged from uh, the darkness of a painful past into the glow of uh, sustainable progress. Costly uh, liberation and deliberate reinvention have led us at last to the soaring flight of a reborn phoenix. Costly liberation and these advancements are the results of ambitious and the strategic leadership choices and the actions too much and they are the promise of a, a new generation. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you will journey back with, with, in time with me uh, for, for some time. Perhaps traveling uh, such a great distance together we let you in on how far we have come. The, the deliberation that our country received as it first embarked on its journey of healing was disappointing. We were treated uh, uh, with all the names of failed state, fractured community, ethnicity, centered, broken, hopeless, helpless. But we had refused to forever lose our rich mother soil to hateful divisionism. And yet what was initially said of our rebuilding efforts which have uh, now borne their fruits was everything but kind. But I hope you will agree, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, if the world won't give you kindness, you might create it. You might create your own. And how my, might you ask? How does one disempower ethnicist pseudoscience? How do we ensure that Empathetic leadership replaces discordant governance. How do we go, dear guest, from destruction to progress? And how do you heal from a dehumanization to forgiveness? How do you overcome such unimaginable atrocities of which I would like to name a few? The more than one million victims we lost, many of which are still refused uh, the decency of having their burial site shared with their families, the half of a million of our women infected with the HIV, often purposely as a result of rape, a weapon of war. 300,000 of our children killed and 100,000 often during 100 days of murderous craze, the consequences of the leadership of such me mediocre ambition that approximately 1,500 university graduates have been recorded over its 30 years of diversity governance. I believe that uh, we all know the number of socioeconomic challenges that result from such tragic conditions and uh, outcomes, ladies and gentlemen, so I will not expand on them further. Besides, I have challenged the jovialness of uh, this uh, evening enough which this is necessarily return back to a heavy, dark past. past. So in different spirits, will you all join me now once more, but this time to look to an encouraging present and indeed a bright future for our country. Honorable guest, the Rwanda life expectancy now has uh, sprung by 42-year-old 
whole years. For whole decades of, or for some of you, your, your whole lives, since 1994 to our current day. I understand me since uh, the life in South Africa started in 1994. Uh, but for a, for a longer life, to indeed lead to a better life, empowerment must begin from youth, as you very well know, reach for change. Indeed, tonight's event theme interweaves so aptly the, the, the relationship between the welfare of youth and social economic transformation. And this speaks to me, to us Rwandans personally, as 40% uh, of our population is under 15 years old. Serving under this demographic structure, my foundation, the Foundation, has pushed for, for solution to our particular challenges. At the Foundation, we have enrolled 100,000 children into early childhood development centers. We provided 10,000 scholarships to brilliant secondary school students from uh, financially dis disadvantaged backgrounds. Awarded 5,113 young girls for their, for their academ academic excellence. We facilitated 300,000 young people's access to adolescent sexual reproductive health services, including HIV screening. Placed hundreds of thousands of dollars directly into the hands of young Rwandan entrepreneurs across dozens of projects inspiring social change. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the fight of every responsible Rwandan citizen and of every institution supporting Rwanda's progress must echo our leadership's effort to reinvent our story, to retrace our trajectory. So hand in hand as a nation, we have sought to create a human community-centered cycle of uh, mutual support and innovative home-growing solutions pursuing economic transformation. And this, uh, dear guests, is what I believe to be the essence of our journey thus far as a nation and what we at the foundation, microcosm of, microcosm of uh, this nation, have drawn inspiration from to design our holistic cycle approach of service provision. Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you for allowing me uh, this uh, moment to revisit our journey. I believe that the heartbeat of our shared dream is improved welfare for all the populations until now underserved, including the youth. Therefore, I'm hopeful that the future will hold for us all more opportunities for enriching collaboration back in Rwanda, which will forever welcome its friend with a fond heart and open arms. A wonderful evening to you all and I thank you for listening to me.